everyone, this is Mike, and we are playing Dark Souls the board game. This is one that I traded for quite a while ago. You're going to love the game I traded for this, because this is a uh, <laughs> well-known game for being kind of broken, according to a lot of people. And I traded Human Interface for this. If you don't know Human Interface, uh, go watch my old review on that one, because... Yeah, I think I got the better part of that deal. So we're gonna play through a game of Dark Souls, the board game. I'm playing this one, not just because I've had it in my collection since that trade and literally never opened it up because of its bad reputation, but uh, mainly because our Patreon members voted for it for our uh, extra play in September. So they got to see this a little bit early, but uh, here it is for all of you whenever you're seeing it. So you can play one to four characters, but as I'll say in my review, I find the game much better with a lower character count. So I'm just going to be doing the Assassin because I'm a big fan of the actual Dark Souls series. And I love, uh, you know, dodge rolling, all that kind of stuff. And the Assassin sort of brings that play style to the fore the most. And setup is pretty straightforward for this. You'll have specific items that start on your character sheet. I've got this Estoc stabbing sword, a target shield, Assassin armor. You have your Estus flask, which is your little healing item here. You can use it once per life, basically. I've got my heroic ability to backstab somebody, get a free attack on them after I dodge roll into them. And uh, finally, my little luck coin here to re-roll one die when I need to. And then I've got my four basic stats. Everything starts on the leftmost spot. Strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith. All those matter for is what items I can equip. So I have these uh, little dinky items here to start. But as I advance those up and dig into the treasure deck, I'll get some cooler stuff going. Now this is a game that is heavily, heavily house ruled by a lot of people to make the experience more enjoyable for them. Uh, I'm just using the, I think official, or at least semi-official, uh, Double Souls Half Spark rule. So that means basically with a single character I would normally have five sparks, and once you die when you have zero sparks, then you lose the game. So it's kind of like I have six lives. I'm taking it down to two, which means with my uh, starting like current life, I basically have three lives instead of six. And to make up for having half as many lives, I'm going to get twice as many souls, basically the experience currency in the game, to level myself up with and get new items. So in theory, it should work to have the game time. The other thing I'm going to do, not really a variant, but just an editing trick, is uh, if I have to fight the same encounter again, and I whooped that encounter the first time I found it, I'm just going to skip through it and not put it on video, because you don't have to see me fighting the same mooks over and over again. But basically, at the start of the game, you just go into your first battle because you don't have any souls to buy anything, so let's fight some guys. So how do you fight in Dark Souls? You're coming from a room wherever you go, so we're just going to say our little uh, bonfire over here. Is it called a bonfire? I think that's right. <laughs> it's over here, and I'm entering through this door, so I go on the first node. All that matters on this map are the little nodes, or like the little spaces of movement. And everything within kind of like the arc of diagonal and orthogonal movement is one space away from my node. So I could go from here to like here, from there to there. That's how movement works. And I flip over the encounter card. This is always gonna be the encounter card for this first room, and it's a pretty nasty one. Unlighted chamber. So I guess there's not much light here. We've got uh, three enemies here. This shows what spots they're gonna spawn on. Got a treasure chest, ooh, and a barrel. That's not as exciting as treasure. So here we go, we've got our enemies, very close, too close for comfort really, and our treasure chest down here, a barrel. Uh, these block movement, although I can smash through the barrel if I really want to. But besides that, it's pretty wide open, and every combat starts with all of the enemies activating, and then it alternates between a player activation and all the enemies going again. So if we were playing a four-player game, uh, let's say that I was the first player, we'd have all the enemies attack, then I would go, then all the enemies attack again, then player two, then all the enemies attack, then player three, and then player four probably is asleep by that point, but uh, if they aren't, <laughs> they would get their turn. So how do enemies activate? We're going to activate them in their threat order from highest to lowest. So we've got the Silver Knight Swordsman going before the Hollow Soldier, going before the Crossbow Hollow. To hit you with some stats here, we've got their life, only one for all of these basic guys. Their defense, uh, two subtracted from physical attacks, one from magical attacks. Their attack range, which is all going to be zero, except the Crossbow guy can shoot me from anywhere. How difficult it is to dodge their vicious blows. So uh, this guy's very tough to dodge. They're pretty easy. And finally, their little AI behavior. So this guy's going to move twice towards the nearest person, and then he'll attack anyone at zero range on the same node as him, uh, and he'll hit everyone in that node, any enemy, so just me, and then push them afterwards. So not very nice. So Silver Knight Swordsman is first. He's going to advance twice, get right up in my face. 
And he is now attacking me for five damage. And it does scoot our camera over for a moment. Uh, as I use stamina to do my own actions, like running around and attacking people, I'm gonna build black cubes from the left. As I take damage, I'm going to place damage cubes, red cubes from the right. And if this is fully filled with cubes, doesn't matter which color, I am dead. I have to go back to the bonfire, lose one of my little sparks, my attempts here, and try to win again. Stamina, I'm going to recover two at the beginning of each of my turns. Health, I can pretty much only recover with my Estus Flask, which will get rid of every cube on my board, but again, only once per spark, only once per life. And I have four rooms to potentially go through and a mini boss to beat, so <laughs> that's a lot to ask until I level up. So this guy's attacking me for five. That is literally half of my life, and I have two options. I can try to dodge him, and assassins are good at dodging with my starting items. I have both one dodge for my assassin armor, one dodge for my target shield, so I would get to roll two dice. It's a 50-50 shot whether you get the right icon. This guy has a wide sweeping sword. I need to get both of those to hit to successfully dodge him, so not great odds. My other option is to block or resist his attack, which means I check what kind of attack it is. That's a regular physical attack. And for that, I'm looking at these left little shield symbols. I would get to roll one black die, and for every uh, sword icon rolled, I would prevent one of that five damage. Dodging is all or nothing, although the nice thing is you do get to move one with it, so you can sometimes avoid other attacks. But blocking can be a partial affair where you just block some of the damage. So it isn't very pretty. This starting room is a nasty one, but I'm gonna try to just block with a single black die. Best I can do is blocking two damage. I just block one, so I'm down four of my ten life. Yikes. So yes, that guy basically lopped my head off in the first turn of the game, but we're not done. He had a push effect with his attack, so I can go to any adjacent space. And I think I'm going to go over here, I guess. And the reason being, the Hollow Soldier is going to activate next, and he can only move one space. So he will valiantly try to reach me and valiantly fail. And then finally, the Crossbow Hollow will try to shoot me. And he's doing three magical damage, although for me, my defense is basically the same, and I can dodge the same. I just need one success to dodge. And why is a zombie with a crossbow shooting magical attacks? I have no idea, because in the Dark Souls video game, they definitely didn't do that, but I guess they just wanted more variety in the enemies. So I'm going to try to dodge our friend here. It takes one stamina, so that's a black cube on the left. But don't forget, I'm going to heal two at the beginning of my turn, so that'll be gone. And if at least one of these bad boys shows a dodge symbol, I am good. So no damage. Oh, and I get to move one whether I succeed at dodging or not. I'm actually going to move right onto this guy because he is the main one who's going to murder me with his uh, dodge difficulty. If I can kill him, I'm in a pretty good spot. So all the enemies have gone. It's my turn to deal some damage. I get to take away up to two stamina from my left side. I can then switch any weapons from my uh, backup slot here to one of my two hands, but I don't have anything yet. And then I can either move and then attack, or attack and then move. So I'm going to attack since I'm already on my little uh, sword friend there's space. And weapons will have one or more options for how you attack. So I can do a weak little stab, barely anything to worry about. I roll two black dice, but subtract one hit from the total. What is this weapon all about, man? Or for three stamina, that's the uh, number in brackets there, I can do three dice minus one damage. Ah, oh, this is terrible. So even though I am glibly hastening my own death, I'm going to uh, do three stamina there for the bigger strike. And this nasty little swordsman has two physical defense. So I need to get three hits to get his one health gone, and that's with minus one. So really, I need to get four hits on three black dice. And black dice are not uh, the strongest one in this game. So here we go. Hope and a prayer. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow. That was lucky. So this guy is removed until the next time I fight in this room. And because I attacked first, I can now move. But I couldn't have moved, then attacked, and then moved again. I get one node worth of movement for free, that's called my walk, and then I can move additional nodes by spending one stamina each. But I'm pretty happy here. The uh, Hollow Soldier won't be able to reach me again, and the Crossbow Hollow, hopefully I can uh, dodge. And that's exactly what's gonna happen. Rawr, coming for me, Pshaw, shooting at me. I'm dodging again, which will put me to four stamina spent. Oh, that would've even worked on the Silver Knight guy. And for the movement, I'll go here, because I'm going to try to take out that crossbow guy next. So, I have four stamina and four damage, but I'm taking two of these away. Actually, you know what? Never mind. Let's stab this guy, I think. Now, he has one physical defense and one life, so I need to get two hits, which means my zero stamina just still won't cut it, probably. So, I'm going to spend three stamina. You might notice that leaves me with a single square left of life. As long as he has zero life left, I'm happy. Oh, man. Maybe I didn't need the extra die. So, boop, he's gone, too. But there's something I have to do here. There is no way for me to avoid this crossbow guy's attack. 
And I don't have the one stamina to dodge because that would still kill me. So I'm going to use my Estus Flask, and that's once per life. And all the cubes are gone. I am free and clear again. Oh, and something I've been forgetting, the crossbow guy is supposed to run away one space before he attacks. Now, I think in previous turns he wouldn't have because he was already uh, cornered, but now he'll definitely go over here before he shoots at me. I'll take one stamina to dodge now that I'm uh, fresh again. Move here, hunt him down, and yep, I'm fine. And then I'll walk into his space, spend three stamina, because I'm getting all those cubes back in a second. He's also got one defense, so that's... Oh, actually, that's not enough, is it? What the heck? Well, he is very happy with his new lease on life. He'll move away from me and shoot again. And, you know, I won't try to dodge. I'll just roll my single uh, black dive defense, so I take two damage. And then I'll walk into his space, try again. Just to show you where I am, those three new cubes for me, uh, two from death. But they'll all go away if I can just get three hits here. Whoa, yes. So we have prevailed. I'm going to leave this card here because that'll show uh, who's in here and also show that I've beaten this chamber. I won't have to fight them again unless I die or go back and rest at the bonfire. I get to open the chest. That'll be permanently open. I'm getting two treasure cards for that. Let's see what we got. Ooh, black armor. If I can level up to use that, that is better than my current armor, definitely. And a sharp gem. If I can get my dexterity up, which is what I'm good at, I can get an extra black die to one of my weapon dice. So that, uh, yeah, it upgrades one of my weapons. Nice. And finally, after every encounter, regardless of its difficulty level, I'm going to gain two sparks per character in the party. Except I'm playing double sparks, so I'm getting four sparks to level up with. And I can either push on and risk losing those sparks, or go back to level up. Let's show you how that works. So like I said, I have four sparks. For two, I can level one of my stats up to tier one, which might let me upgrade to some new equipment. For four, I can get one of them to tier two, and then for eight, I can take it to tier three. Now, sadly, for the black armor, I need 20 dexterity and 20 intelligence, but uh, although I can get to 22 dexterity with two souls, I would need another two and then four more to get to tier two for intelligence, so I'm not quite there yet. Oh, and I forgot. All of this is healed because I beat the encounter. But any souls you hold when you go into combat, you risk uh, losing if you fight with them. So I'm going to go ahead and spend two each to get uh, dexterity up and intelligence up. That way with my next four, I could get enough for the black armor. All right, now I could proceed to this room or this room. In the actual game, you'd have them all laid out, but I'm just keeping things simple here. So in the absence of any actual information, let's go north. So what friendly people are waiting for me here? Oh, no, this isn't too bad. We've got a crossbow person and a silver knight archer who does not hit as hard as a sword version. And finally, we've got the true star of the show, the barrel. You saw what a major role he played in the last fight. So the silver knight crossbowman shoots for four damage at everyone on a node, which again won't matter in single player. And then he backs away one, kind of like the crossbow hollow. But look, he only needs one to dodge. But he still has uh, two defense and one heart, so I gotta hit him pretty hard to kill him. But the fact that I can dodge him should make this hopefully much easier than the last one. So he's attacking me first. I will spend one stamina to try to dodge it. Just need one success. Oh! So once per spark, kind of like my healing thing, I can re-roll a die. I'm not sure if this is the time to do it, but we're going to try anyway. Thanks for nothing. So I suffer the full brunt of that guy's at four damage, although I still get to move. Um, I guess I'd rather be here so this guy won't run away from me. And then after his attack, he moves one away, so he'll go right there. And this guy would want to move one away, but he can't get further away from me, so he'll just shoot me. Try to dodge him as well. Let's see if it works out better, and I'll go right into his space. There we go. So to show you my status, I'm losing these two stamina, so I just have the four damage. But I'll go up to three stamina to get the stronger attack for my stabby sword. There we go. There we go. Three is enough. Minus one for my sword's at negative. Minus one for his armor. I got one left. And then I will walk one towards the archer. And I'll spend another stamina to dodge when he shoots at me, which could be my death right now. Come on, come on. There we go. And then we're covering two. Now with four spots left, if I use one stamina to get into his space and then use three to do my stronger attack, I'll be dead. You know what that means? I'm just going to walk up one and hope he misses me again. So he's going to shoot again. I'm going to dodge again. And I'm going to choose not to move because if I went into his space, he'd just retreat after the attack. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. And I'll take off two of these, but put three right back on. So I do have enough left to dodge if my attack does not kill him. This is the same very tall order I needed before. I need to get four successes on three dice because of his two armor and the minus one from my stupid sword. There we go. Wow, I am loving these dice when I have to attack these guys. So no treasure chest this time. I just got the four souls. 
And I could get new cards for one soul each, which I'll certainly be doing at some point to get a better sword. But for the moment, let's stick to the plan and get this black armor equipped. So that's going to take uh, all four of my souls to increase intelligence to tier two. And whenever I'm not in battle, I can basically switch my equipment out. And quite honestly, this isn't that much of an upgrade, except now I get blue dice for physical attack, which are way better than black dice. And I can have two upgrades on this, so if I get cool extra items, I can put them underneath, whereas my starting stuff had nothing. So, maybe that was too much effort to get a slightly better armor, but I'm taking it. And you know what else I'm taking? The fight to a third room. So this, uh, I would have had to go back to the original room, because there's three uh, weaker encounters with the boss I chose, the mini-boss, which is this fun gargoyle guy, nice miniature there. And then a level two, which I'm sure would whoop me, so <laughs> let's see how I do against the final level one. And oh man, I'm so happy about this. None of these silly silver knights with their impossible armor. I just have a crossbow guy and two sword guys and a treasure? Thank you, room. Sword guys rush into their doom right next to me. Crossbow over there. I don't care, they're all gonna die. So the first hollow soldier runs in. I will spend a stamina to uh, dodge away because then the other guy can't reach me. You have to roll to see if I get hit though. Come on! <laughs> So that's four damage. I'm halfway to death already with my one stamina cube. Other guy comes chasing me. Crossbow guy runs away, shoots me. And now I'm thinking, gosh, after that last hit, I could use my new blue die, which you'll see will often roll two swords. It even could roll a three and cancel all three of his damage. Oh, no, no. He is a magic attack, which means I still have to use the cruddy black die. So never mind. So we're dodging again right toward his face. Come on, come on don't kill me. Yes. Now I'll lose my only two stamina, and for my turn, hello. And the lovely thing now is these guys are too slow to basically ever catch me, so I'm definitely going to spend three stamina to get a stronger stab on him. And here to see you can visualize, although, gosh, are those black cubes just like disappearing in the board and the table? <laughs> There's three, uh, four damage, three open spots. Say goodnight, crossbow man. Oh my lord in heaven. Yep, he's dead. And I can move them whichever way I want as long as they're getting closer. I'm actually going to bide my time a bit, so I'll rest to get two stamina back. Now I'll just walk here without attacking. Oh man, you know what? I forgot. There's a treasure chest and a barrel here. And they are once again playing integral roles in the battle. Now here's the fun part. I can have this guy go here and this guy go here. Divide and conquer. I can kill him and this guy won't even be able to reach me. So here we go. Boop. Let's spend all three of my stamina to get a big stab. That's enough. Get out of here. Friends creeping up. I'm down to one stamina left. I recover all but one stamina. Then I'm gonna walk into his space and get three more by stabbing him. Oh my gosh, my black dice are on fire. There we go. Another treasure chest ransack for two cards. Hopefully they somewhat match the dexterity intelligence I've already upgraded. Oh, this is cool. I get an ember. So I discard this, I get an ember token. This just uh, sits over here on my board. And what it means is until I die, so until I mess up and like let myself get killed in an overly tough fight, anytime I would take three damage from an effect or more, I just take one less. So certainly not an absolutely huge effect, but it might be enough for me not to try the level two encounter and just uh, turn tail and rest for a bit. And the other one, shadow armor. Oh my gosh, what? Okay, so this is, when you dodge me, move two nodes instead of one. This gives me two dodge dice. Oh, this is like meant for me. But I need to upgrade my dexterity twice to use it, so that would cost me, what, 12 more souls? And my faith twice, so that would be, yes. That is a long-term goal for me, <laughs> but not something I can really work towards right now. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the fire, and before I rest, I'm going to spend the four souls I just got. And I don't really know what I need to upgrade except for that one armor, and I already have pretty good armor, so let me draw some cards. I'll go ahead and spend two souls, no reason to uh, have it since odds aren't worth anything. Worker armor, can I stop getting armor, please? It's just worse than what I already got, so, yep, you're useless, and you can't sell these back. They're just literally <laughs> worth nothing. And a Chloranthi ring. This one's actually pretty good. It's an armor upgrade, which, remember, my new armor can fit. So if I can get 18 in every stat, that would take double upgrades for both of the ones I haven't touched yet. I'll gain three stamina at the start of each of my turns instead of two. Not bad. So the question before me now is, do I spend my last two souls to upgrade my faith or my strength? Or do I draw two more cards from the item deck, but I won't have any souls left to actually upgrade to them? Well, I know I'm going to draw more items, because I still haven't gotten a good weapon, so let's go ahead and do that. So I won't uh, upgrade anymore before I rest. Okay, Firelink Armor. Uh, better for magic defense, but no dodge, so that's again a waste. And a Poison Gem. Ooh, I could put this on my weapon, but no I can't, because my weapon has zero upgrade slots. 
But this gives whichever weapon it's on poison, which means uh, after the enemy activates, they'll take one damage and then it goes away. So it would help me kill like those guys with really tough defense, but can't use it till I get a real weapon. All right, and with that, I am going to rest because I don't think I have a chance in the encounter two room yet and I don't want to lose my ember. So my sparks go down to one. I get back my healing potion. I get back my luck token. And all the encounters reset, so I have to fight them all over again. So we're starting with this one, which is honestly probably the toughest one with that swordsman. And I did say I was going to skip over encounters I had already done, but this one is so tough I think I have to show it again and see if I can do better. So there's that jerk. Here's these guys. The treasure chest is still open, so I'll never get any more cards from that. The barrel is back. Remember this guy runs in twice and then pushes me. And I still think trying to dodge where I need two symbols is a foolish thing to do. So I think I'm just going to use my new blue defense die. That should help a bit. Yes, it does. It only took three damage. And then he pushes me. I'll just repeat my old tricks. I'll go back here. The uh, undead guy can come over here. Here, it doesn't really matter. This guy cannot run away. He'll shoot at me for three. And I will, once again, take a stamina to dodge. All right, come on. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, and I didn't say where I wanted to go. Um... I guess I'm going to try to see if I can get a lucky kill on him again. So I'll clearly spend three stamina to do my super attack, as super as I can manage. Here we go! Oh my gosh, alright! I mean, this battle should be harder than it is because of my great luck. Now this time I have to uh, try to dodge this guy, or I guess take it on my armor. But even though I already have three stamina spent, I think I'll take a fourth to dodge. Let's move right here, I suppose. Cancel the crossbow guy running away. Fine, and I'll do another one to dodge the crossbow guy. It better work. I'll go right into his space. Oh, man, okay. Gotta use my reroller. I'm just gonna die immediately on this uh, second spark. There we go. Lucky. All right, so I take two away, which leaves me with just enough to do uh, three and then walk to where that guy can't reach me. So as long as I kill the crossbow guy, I will have beat this room without using my healing potion this time. So much better result. All right, give me at least three swords. No! So, all lies. I am healing again. Man, it's going even worse than the first time. So this guy will come in, this guy will run away and then shoot at me. I guess I'll dodge again right uh, towards him. Got it. And I should say, dodging his attack would have been a perfect time to use my backstab heroic ability, which you haven't seen yet. I flip it again, it's once per life. And basically, after a successful dodge, I get to attack the person who attacked me if I'm in their space or if I can reach them with my attack. And I don't spend any stamina for it, even if I do the strongest version. So, would have been great to do that, but I didn't. And I'll walk into this guy's space, spend uh, three stamina, and try again. That's enough. There we go. God, this sword will be the death of me. <laughs> All right, this guy comes in. And you know what the hey, we'll just tank his damage with our new armor. Nice, only one gets through. Which means after using our potion, we're looking pretty nice. Uh, I guess I'll take away two and then just add three for a stronger attack. And that'll be it. So don't get anything from here except four souls. And as much as I hate to keep doing it, this uh, weapon is such a liability on the stronger armor, I gotta keep drawing items. So I'll spend my first two to draw items. You know, that's much more like it. Okay, Silver Knight Straight Sword. Uh, this one's pretty nice. Look, it can do uh, two black or a black and a blue, but no minus, thank God. Oh, and it adds to my dodge. Oh my gosh, this one does two? Yes, I'm loving these. Composite Bow can shoot four away. Cool. And ooh, I'm only one strength upgrade, so I have enough to actually use this. Oh, no, come on. Come on, can I really? <laughs> is it really the same amount of damage? But it does up my dodge, although this is a uh, two-handed weapon, which means I could not have my shield equipped, so I'd still just have two dodge. So literally, literally, except for this being a ranged weapon, nothing would change. Oh, wait. Ahaha, something would change. I can equip an upgrade to this. So, okay, we can uh, put these in our backup slots because I can switch to those at the beginning of each of my turns. That'll hang out until later because I do want to get that. Oh, I'm sorry, that's using my last two souls to upgrade my strength, of course. And then let's see, the sharp gem is way better because my attacks gain one black die. But the poison gem will cause poison, which means that even those guys with the strong defense will still die. In any case, I'm kind of wasting it by putting on the composite bow because uh, once you put one of these upgrades on a weapon, you can never take it off. Yeah, it might be a waste, but at least it'll let me kill those guys consistently, so let's go for it. Our next minute to kill our friends here, who are so easy, I won't even play through it. And I do want to work towards this Silver Knight Straight Sword that's 20 of each stat, so... I guess uh, I'll do four strength. Oh, no, I don't think the next room will kill me, most likely, so... Oh, I'm sorry, I already used that, so let's do uh, two faith and keep two souls. If I die, they'll basically hang around on the node where I died, and if I can move to it, I get them back. But if I die again while they're hanging out, then I've lost them forever. 
Now, I will play out the battle in the Ash Gardens, because this is a full-on archer fight, and that just sounds exciting to me. And yeah, you know what's not going to matter at all in this battle? Movement. I can literally just, uh, <laughs> here, here we go. We're all right there, because every one of our attacks can reach everybody else. So first is the Silver Knight Great Bow Guy. I'm going to dodge. Actually, should I? Yeah, I mean, I have a pretty good chance of doing it. Yes. Then our Crossbow Guy will attack. I'll dodge again. Yes. And I've lost nothing from my stamina. I'm going to shoot the Great Bow Guy with my Composite Bow because I don't need to damage him, I just need to poison him. So two dice, minus one at zero cost. Those aren't even the right dice. Two black dice, minus one. Wait, what? <laughs> Did I kill him? All right, never mind. He's not poisoned, he's just dead. Our other friend attacking me. Dodge roll, dodge roll. Oh no, three damage, however shall I survive? Actually, I know how, I literally have to do nothing. I'll just uh, shoot him with my basic attack. I won't even roll for it. Because I can let him hit me for three more damage, and he still dies. <laughs> so maybe I didn't need to play that one out. But that gives me four more souls, so let's see. Oh, wait, I'm still going to be, like, in a weird number, aren't I? God, I forgot to apply my Ember. Each of those three hits would have only done two, so I would have been even better off. But, yeah, okay, let's get Faith up. That leaves me with two souls. So if I get two more souls, I get my Strength up. I can use the uh, Silver Knight Straight Sword. Still can't use the Shadow Armor. Still can't use the Sharp Gem. Upgrading my uh, Dexterity will get me both of those. And, ooh, if I get my Strength up, I can also use the three Stamina turn upgrade instead of just two Stamina. I like that. So big question before me now, do I try out the level two encounter without any more stuff yet and risk my two souls? And I don't have healing, I don't have my luck reroll, I do have my backstab. Well, you know, speaking of my backstab, I guess I should go into the encounter with my sword so that if I want to use it right away, I can, because I can't backstab with the composite bow. Oh, you yeah, know, I can. Can I backstab into the, with the composite bow? As long as I have range to him. So actually, it's way better than my uh, little stabby sword. Of course, everything is. So with that, with the minus one damage, I'm doing it. I'm going for the big, big attack. And because I had a room to the left and down, I can pick which way I enter. I guess I want to be further away from the guys because I have a bow. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely more. So the good news, and there is a little bit of good news, is that these sword guys cannot reach me. And neither can this guy. Uh, the bad news is that there are five enemies. You might have noticed that. There's also a tombstone here. You can't move through it. If you know Dark Souls, uh, people who die can leave hints on their tombstones. So basically that lets me uh, see one of the boss's card and kind of know what's coming when I fight him. So, yikes. Okay, so the Silver Knight, uh, great swordsman. Let's have him go, like, into a corner. Then maybe I can run away from them. This guy I have to have go straight ahead because that's the only way to get closer to me. Ooh, ooh, I've got a fun trick with my backstab I'd have figured out. So the Silver Knight great bowman attacks and then moves. So his activation doesn't finish until uh, after he's done both. And here's what that means. He's about to shoot me. I'm going to spend one stamina to dodge. Let's hope it works. Oh, where do I want to move? Definitely away from all the uh, danger down there. And it is time for a backstab. And at least in this game, backstab means shoot you from the front with a bow. Totally makes sense. But what it says is after I successfully dodge, I can attack the enemy as long as I can reach them. My bow clearly can. Except no, it can't because I said I was equipping my sword. So forget everything I just said. <laughs> But that's okay. We'll get him in a second. We'll uh, get one of these guys first. Okay, the uh, archer shoots at me. I'll also uh, try to dodge him. I'll keep making my way away from them. Nice. And this is pretty beautiful. I lose all the stamina. I'm going to shoot one of these guys. They are in range. I'm not going to spend any extra stamina, so I'll roll two dice minus one. I think it's impossible for me to hit them. I guess if I get two doubles. Nope. So he takes no damage, but he is poisoned, which means after he moves two and does not reach me, he will die. But I'm still going to walk right there. That way this guy can't reach me either. Oh, wait. He would have wanted to go away from me. So I guess he'd like be in the corner. So lovely. I have no stamina spent, no damage. And yeah, this should be actually pretty easy, I think. So next round, one of these guys will move, then die from the poison. Other guy will uh, try to reach me, I guess. This guy can just move up here. I'll just kite them around the uh, gravestone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Clearly I had my bow equipped or I couldn't have killed that guy because I want to do my little backstab trick this time. So when this guy shoots me, I will dodge. So I'll definitely move right there, and yes. So here we go, backstab. I'm gonna spend zero stamina, and again, I'm not even gonna roll because his activation will finish when he moves away from me. Whoops, poison kills him, dead. Then I'll spend my second stamina, which will all go away in a second anyway, for this guy, dodge him. Oh, but that's okay, now my amber comes into play. His three damage is reduced to two. But he does, oh, he should move away from me. He doesn't wanna be there. All right, I'm liking this bow now. See, I'll move down here, shoot that guy, spending zero stamina. He will move and die from the poison. This guy is one, two, three, one, two, three. He is gallantly trying to reach me. Crossbow guy can move away. I'll spend a stamina to dodge right towards him. Oh, 
Once again, I fail. Two more damage. Crossbow Hollow, you are my true nemesis. So with that in mind, let's uh, shoot him in the face. What the hey, I'll spend uh, three stamina to... Whoops. <laughs> let's roll that die back in there. Yep. You're gone. And yeah, I think we can just say this guy dies automatically because I can kite him to infinity and just poison him. So bye-bye. So sweet, I get four more souls. That brings me to six. And I'm realizing these two are now useless because everything is going to be a multiplier of four except to buy more items. So I will upgrade my strength. And sure, I'll buy two more items because I really don't need those souls. Ooh, poison mist. One range. This is kind of cool, though. Look, for three stamina, I can poison an entire uh, zone. So everyone there would take one damage at the end of their activation. Halberd. I cannot possibly equip that. It needs 31 faith, and my highest is 30. But here's what matters to me. I'm going to put my Chloranthi ring on my armor, so now I get three stamina back each turn. And I now have the option of equipping the Silver Knight Straight Sword, which uh, attacks pretty well. I kind of like my bow better. It's because of the kiting. But look, now when I have this equipped, it's only one-handed. Uh, S-Doc, get the heck out of here. I'm never using you again. I can have my target shield equipped as well, have my bow in backup until I need it. Now I have three dodge dice. Ooh. But I still haven't upgraded my dexterity, so I can't equip the sharp gem to give that an extra black die of attack. And I don't know if I want to. Maybe I do. All right, but I'm going to go rest at the bonfire. I don't think I want to fight the boss yet, so I'll go down to zero sparks. This is my final hurrah, my final chance to fight him. Get all my stuff back that I spent. And at this point, I'm going to call all the fights I fought easily winnable, especially that last one with the kiting. But I do want to see how I do with the original battle. I think it should be laughably easy now, but hey, let's find out. All right, so I'm starting out with my three dodge ability. This guy's going to come straight in, attack me. You know, I'm not going to dodge because I would still need two out of three to succeed. I think I'll just block for three damage. And actually, that's only a two thanks to my uh, little thingy, my ember. All right, and then he pushes me. Uh, this guy comes running down. They try to shoot me. I will dodge him. Three dice, I got to imagine. Yep, we're good. Oh, and sorry, uh, did I move? No, he pushed me, so I'm going to move again. And actually, wait, let's say that he pushed me here and then I dodge because I want to get as far away from him as possible. So, yeah, now if I walk one, I'll equip my bow, of course. He can't reach me, neither can he. So I'll switch out my sword and my shield, and I will bow that guy. So he dies after he activates. This guy moves. He tries to shoot me again. I guess I'll try to dodge it. Okay, so I take two more damage. I'm going to have to move. Let's go right up to his face, which means he would run away, wouldn't he? Just to show you where I am, yeah, I'll equip the uh, sword. Sword and shield, I should say. And what the hey, let's just uh, run over here. Let's go a little nuts, spend three stamina. And this guy comes in, I get three dodge now. Although if I don't dodge, he could kill me, so let's see how it goes. Oh, yeah, we're fine. So it was slightly close with me kind of being a little silly. But yeah, no point in actually uh, taking a chance. I'll switch back to my bow. Kite away and go for the shore poison, so bye-bye. All right, so with that ease of defeating the definitely hardest encounter without spending anything, I'm just going to say I get 16 souls for the full run. I'll certainly spend four of them to get that. Oh, that's right, I can still get the uh, shadow armor, so yep, let's spend eight more. That leaves me with four. And I can keep the chloranthi ring because you can switch around armor upgrades. So I have basically no defense now, but I have four dodge when I have my uh, sword and shield equipped, so that's pretty good. So the question is, do I use my last four souls to draw stuff, or do I save them to level up faster? I think I'm going to draw stuff, see if I get any other nice things. So let's see, a great mace. Nice damage, an automatic one, but no good dodging. I don't really want defense, so I'm probably never going to use that. Kite shield, again, better for defense than dodging, so no. Ooh, a blessed gem. That would uh, let me get another plus one black die on my straight sword, but I don't have enough faith for it yet. Ooh, what is this? A hornet ring. Your attacks gain plus one orange die, which are the strongest, but then minus two. And to show you, these dice have one single sword, two double swords, so I have a one-sixth chance of minus one damage with the minus two, a one-third chance of no effect, or a 50% chance of one or two extra damage. So yeah, that'll be my second one, along with my ring for a three stamina every turn. And I think I gotta equip this sharp gem to give my uh, straight sword an extra black die. Maybe I'll put the Blessed Gem on it later, but let's fight our boss. So here's our Gargoyle friend. And big thing with bosses, both mini bosses like this and main bosses, is they have these little attack arcs, which can let you, like, get uh, special attacks on them. It can mean they sometimes don't hit you if you're in the wrong arc. So go and put him here, facing me. Here I am, sword at the ready. And here's his nasty little card. He's got 26 health, 2 automatic defense against physical attacks, which is, again, all I have. If he gets to 12 health or lower, he'll heat up, which means he'll get a nastier AI card in. But he's going to have four cards to start, and once he's heated up, he'll have the flying high ability, which means when I attack him in his node, I have to spend an extra stamina to attack. 
So I'm putting the three AI cards with the heat up ability to the side. And I'm just gonna take four out of these five and shuffle them all together with one removed. But because of that gravestone, I get to see what one of them is. So I know he has Sweeping Strike, where he moves one towards me, trying to push me if he can, and then attacks at one range in every arc except his front arc, which is vulnerable. It only takes one to dodge. I mean, a lot of his things are be pretty easy for me to dodge, except for maybe one or two attacks. But I still shuffle it in. His order of cards is not going to change, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You just leave him in the same order until he heats up, gets to 12 life or less, and that's when uh, he'll shuffle in one of those nastier cards and he'll have a new order to his attacks. So let's do this. He's going first. But it is indeed the sweeping strike. So he'll move one towards me. No push. Then he's going to attack me for five. Obviously, I'll use my newfound power to dodge for four dice. But first, I'll dodge, I guess, over here. And... Hey, I got the one. I'm going to get my stamina back. How it works is if I attack from his rear arc, I would get a plus one black die to my attack. But to do that, if you move onto his space, you go into the arc where he is, and it's an extra movement to get to a specific spot like that. But I guess I can do that. That would just take me one extra stamina, right? Since I recover three stamina per turn, I guess I'll go for a big whack. So what does that mean? I've got a black and a blue. The little gem thing I put on there gives me another black die. Being in his weak spot gives me another one. And then my ring gives me an orange, but remember I lose two from the total. And I also lose two for his defense, so really I'm minus four here. So four. So I do four damage, he's down to 22. Now what's he gonna do? Ooh, a good old fashioned tail whip. So if I had been right in front of him, you would have missed me entirely because he's attacking before he moves. When he moves, he turns to face me. So it's a four damage attack, but it will take two to dodge, ooh. But remember, I literally have no defense anymore, so that's basically my only option. Oh, come on. Oof, I'm down to death's door all of a sudden. I could use my coin, but a 50-50 shot of maybe dodging, I don't really like that. Then he's gonna move one away from me. When he has the push icon, he first pushes me. So I go into a node within the same arc. I guess I'll go right here. Then he moves one straight away from me while facing me. But the nice part is he's weak right to the front of me. Okay, so that's a card to watch out for. The double dodge is really going to hurt me. I'm going to get three stamina back. Mm -hmm. The question is, do I like run away and shoot him with my bow maybe? So that will take away, uh, what is it, one of my dodge. But yeah, a lot of his attacks won't even reach me that far. So let's take the chance. And I'm not going to use any stamina because I don't want to like automatically die. So it normally be two black dice, but it's in its weak spot. So three black dice plus my orange, but then a minus one for the bow, minus two for the orange. So minus three, minus two armor, minus five, but at least it'll be poisoned. Oh, nice. Uh, what is that? So two damage gets through. And then after he activates it, he'll take one damage for the poison, and then it goes away. So I'm just going to give him the extra one now. So he's at 19. Now hopefully he can't reach me. Ah, beautiful. Electric breath, which is another tough one to dodge. But look, he doesn't move at all. He just turns to face me, and then he shoots in his front arc, but only at one range, so he does nothing to me. All right, so I'm going to recover all my stamina now. And what the hell? I'll stay here, but I will do a more powerful bow attack. Now, I'm not in his weak spot, so I'm just the same dice as before. Okay, so still minus five, so it'll be two plus one for the poison. So he's down to 16. Remember, 12 is when he heats up. Now we get to see his final activation card. Nice, and it's a halberd thrust, so he's going to advance one, and then he's going to try to attack me at one range, but he can't get close enough. And he's weak on his left side. So now is when the strategy really comes in until he heats up and can change his stuff up. So he's going to do a sweeping strike where he'll move one towards me and then attack at one range, which means I cannot possibly avoid it. Oh, that's a bummer, but it's only one dodge. Then the tail whip, if I can end my turn in his front radius, he will automatically miss me before he moves. The electric breath, I just have to be two away. The halberd thrust, I have to be three away. So yeah, not bad. So I'm going to switch back to my sword because I know the attack that uh, I need to dodge is coming up. Getting all my stamina back, but I will spend one to get into his front arc. Actually, his left arc was the weak one, which I can get to. I can go boop, boop. And let's see, do I want to spend three more to do a stronger attack? Sure. All right, so we're back to this again. Minus two for the orange die. Minus two for his armor. Oh, my lord. What is that? Two, three, five? Whoa, uh-oh. All my plans went out the window because he is heating up. Which I think means... Yeah, it's about time to use my SS flask before he uh, <laughs> throws some unexpected stuff at me. So I take one of his set-aside heat-up cards randomly, and then I shuffle his whole deck so I don't know his attack pattern anymore. And also remember his heat-up effect. If I attack him on his space, I have to spend an extra stamina. So what you doing, Gargoyle? Oh, electric breath! Oh, wait, no, that's right. He does turn to face me, so this is not great. 
guess he turns so that I'm in his front node. Is that how it works? Okay, then he's attacking me for four, and I need two to dodge. I do have my four dice, so let's go for it. There we go. No damage. Oh, I had to dodge somewhere. Wait, where's he weak? So I could dodge within his space to any of his sides. So let's go right here. I can hit him and then run away. All right, now no reason to hold back, so I will spend four stamina plus one for his uh, heat-up ability. I'm doing my full attack with my sword again. So let's see, minus four, so five damage. He's down to six. And I can still move, although he's in the middle. So I have a decent chance. I could run to his front in case he has that ability coming. Because all the rest were pretty much like move towards me and then hit me. So yeah, I'm going to move to his front and just hope that that's the next one that comes out. Let's see. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That was a great guess. So he tries to tail whip me, but uh, he cannot because I am not in his front arc. Or sorry, not in his rear or uh, right arc. Then he does push me and run away. So I guess I'll just go here and he goes there. That's fine. So I get uh, all three of those back. And I still have my dodge free attack. I still have my little coin thing. But you know what? Let's play smart. I know that basically none of his attacks except his new heat up one can hit me. So I'm going to switch to my bow. And just hope that I don't have the, uh, what is it, there's three cards left, so I hope that I don't have the one-third chance of him getting me. I will walk back here, and I'll shoot him. And that's right, I am in his weak arc, so I will, what the heck, I'll spend three stamina to get a stronger hit. So that's four black dice and an orange minus five total. Oh, that was not a great roll. Okay, so that's a three plus the poison will be four. So he is down to two. So after I survive this, final strike, baby. Here he comes. Nice, he did not get his heat up. I guess he'll never get it. So he's charging towards me, one. Then he tries to attack. Man, I can't even like use my dodge backstab combo. I right, get three back and let's switch to my sword. It does more damage. I don't want to wait for the poison to affect him. Hello, my friend. Let's go one, two. That'll cost me another stamina. Let's spend four to attack him. And I'm not in his weak spot. So I'm just gonna have these minus four, but I just need to get two over. Oh yeah, that's way more than enough. So bleh. That didn't even work. Flip. So now I gain souls multiplied by these sparks left over, but there aren't any, so I get nothing. But I do get all this nasty gargoyle equipment. Oh my gosh, do I even want it? Let's see, the gargoyle shield, that is a great defensive shield, but no roll. The other two are both two-handed weapons, so I can't even use them with the shield. They definitely hit harder than mine, doesn't this one has one range, that's nice. But yeah, once again, no dodging and double-handed, so I would just take away all my defense unless I uh, switch down my items a bit. So I guess I'll keep them for now, at least. So now guess what would happen? So exciting. I would reset up another five boards, or four boards plus the boss, and I would play through those rooms another three times each, and then I would level up as much as I could to fight the boss. But you know what? Let's skip all that, and let's just, I don't know, let's be conservative. Let's say that the first two tries, I only got through the first two rooms, and then finally got through all four. So what is that? That's... That's 32 souls to spend. And even with that conservative estimate, here we go. We just got everything maxed out. That's 24 of them. Then we get eight more items. Short sword. Nope, I want to dodge. Great axe. I'm not strong enough. Or I guess I am, but whatever. Do Titanite shards. Weapons attacks gain plus one damage. I like that. Pierce shield. Oh, you can attack with it. That's kind of fun. Spotted whip. Hmm. Poisons. And can attack from one range away, and still lets me dodge. That might be a contender. Rotten Grew Dagger, no. Ooh, Effigy Shield, I can equip it while I have a two-hander equipped. Hmm, great magic weapon. I could equip it in my offhand and make my other weapons attacks magicals, which might be better for defense. Short Sword, no. Great X, yeah, I already saw all of those. So hey, it might be dull, but I like uh, to keep a good thing going. We're just kind of playing make-believe here anyway to keep the video in a tight time period. I'm going to keep all my armor the same. I could go to more blocking route, but I like dodging. We put the Blessed Gem on my straight sword. I think uh, with that already having an upgrade, well, yeah, I still think it's better than the whip. So the only thing I'll do is I'll add in the great magic weapons. So if the guy's super weak to magic attacks, I can uh, switch that in instead of my shield when I know I won't be uh, getting attacked by him. Look at this excitement. This room is double the size. And we are facing the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Oh, I guess the magic uh, attack thing doesn't matter at all. He's got 34 life. He's up at 18. Two defense, which we've already faced before. He has five AI cards. And he's really unpredictable. After a heat-up behavior card is drawn and resolved, you shuffle his deck. So you don't really know what he's going to do. Let's set up as the same. I put all his heat-up cards to the side. I take a four, or no, five for him of these regular cards. And he is far away, which I hope means he won't uh, come kill me. But I guess we'll see. Lunging thrust. Wow. 
Okay, so he's moving three towards me with push, and then doing a five attack at one range. One, two, three, yep. I do need two dodge. Well, let's go for it. Let's see, his back is his weak spot, so... I mean, I guess I'll still... No, I'll go over here. And nice, a dodge. And I guess I'll just walk onto him and attack. And since I'm fresh, I'll go ahead and spend three stamina for the stronger version. I'm not in his weak spot with my new uh, gem. I still get three black dice. Oh, that was not a great roll. So uh, two of those for the minus for my ring and his defense. So three gets through. He's at 31. Let's see what he does now. Deadly Grasp. Doesn't sound perfect. I'm actually in his weak spot, but it's not going to matter because first he moves, pushing me. So the push pushes me to somewhere. I guess I'll go towards the outskirts because I'd rather like run past him maybe. Then he moves one and pushes me. And he attacks for seven, which pushes me? <laughs> Yikes. So clearly going to try to dodge again. Here's another two. Okay, nice. I'm sorry, the dodge would have taken me here, which means his push for that attack never goes off. Now, that's a great one to know is coming, because if I'm three or more away, he can't even hurt me with it, but of course he's going to be more unpredictable. I get three stamina back. If I go right up in here, I can get a weak attack on him, so let's do it. And with that, I won't spend the three stamina. Five black dice and an orange. Okay, so... There's four to take care of his defense and the negative, so five damage. He's at uh, 26, and he heats up at 18. Okay, his third card, Uppercut. Once again, it wouldn't matter too much. He's going to move three towards me, and it's another two dodge. Pushes me first, and then he moves uh, three times pushing me. So one, I have to go within the same arc, so I go there. Two, I guess I'll go there, and three. I'll take a second stamina to try to dodge his Uppercut. Oh, no. How much damage is it? Five. That's pretty bad. Let me use my coin. See if I get lucky. Nope. I don't want to use my potion yet, I don't think. See, his weak spot is on his right, so two movement would get me there. That would cost me a stamina. But that's fine, because I just won't use the extra stamina for the bonus attack, since I'm getting an extra die. So these dice again. Oh, yuck. That was an ugly roll with the orange, so just uh, two damage gets through. So he's down to 24. And please, sir, don't kill me. Double slash. He executes all of this twice, so he will push me. Since I can't go into his arc, I can choose which way I go along the wall, so I'll go here. Okay, then he moves like that, then he turns like that. Oh, and really? He's only attacking to his front and right? That seems dumb. Okay, so he misses me. He wants to push me again, he pushes me there. He turns away from me, and he misses me again. That's a, that's a weird card. All right. I am thankful for it, though. Okay, and his rear is his weak arc this time, so I will go ahead and spend a stamina to run in there. And let's do just my normal attack again. Oh, that's much better. What is that? Four damage? Okay. So he's down to 20, approaching the halfway point. Okay, so this is his last activation before I know what he does in order. Sweeping Blade Strike. Okay, so he's going to push me first, but I can go whichever direction I want. Then he'll chase me and push again. And then I'll turn right, and this time I'll actually attack the correct way. Is there a way for me to swing this? I guess if I say he pushes me here and then runs into the corner, I can go either way along the wall. Ah, but unfortunately, if he turns that way, he's going to hit me either way. So, and his weak point's on the right, though. So, oh, no, no, wait, he won't hit me on the right after he turns. So, yeah, I'll say that I got pushed here, but he doesn't hit me. <laughs> Jeez, Okay. Now, so this time I'm going to have to spend any stamina, so I guess I'll go ahead and uh, spend... Oh, wait, what's he about to do? He's doing a lunging thrust. There's no way for me to avoid that unless I really ran far away. But after that will be the deadly grasp. If I can get three away there, I'll be fine. See, so yeah, I'll just walk in and do my stronger attack. I'm in his weak spot, so lots of dice. Although not the greatest rolls. That's pretty good. Five damage? Yeah. Oh, whoops, that come to his heat up point, which was 18. So I took one of his heat up cards at random. I'm shuffling everything up. Remember with his special ability, whenever I draw that heat up card, he's gonna shuffle again. First he's doing, oh, lunging thrust is what he's gonna do anyway. I like that. Pushes me. One, two, three. Okay, he's attacking me for five. I do have to dodge successfully or I will die because I didn't use my flask. And I have no reroll, so I gotta get two out of four. Come on. Yes. When I should have moved. He's weak on his rear. So, sure, let's I guess dodge to here. I get rid of three of these. I think I'm going to attack and then use my flask. 
So I'm not going to worry about getting into his rear arc. I'll just move right here and use my more powerful attack. Come on, hit him hard. That's pretty good. What was that? Five, six, seven. Okay. So minus four, I guess that's just three. Come down to 12. Now I'm drinking my Estus Flask, so we are fully good to go again. What's he doing? Uppercut again, so he's going to push me all over the earth, and then uh, he's going to attack me for five. So I'll go one, uh, two, try to get him into the corner again. Uh, three, and then that should be the final one. Okay, I'm going to try to dodge. I need two again. Oh, okay, so I take five damage. I can survive that. Yeah, but it's kind of a bummer because I wanted to uh, dodge roll into his weak arc. I can still move in there and get a free attack, but I'll just attack him like this. I guess I won't use the three stamina. Come on, hit this guy hard. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Two, four, five, six damage. That's half of it. He's only got uh, six left. Man, I really wish I'd dodge now. Okay, what's he doing? Oh, still no uh, heat up. Can I? Is this the one I can dodge? So he's going to push me, which I could go there. Then I'll move and push me again. I can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, so I should be able to make this work. I think I'm in the exact same spot, even. Push within the same arc. It comes over here. I can push uh, anywhere in this area. Where do I? He doesn't attack to the right. So I'll say he pushes me along this wall. He turns, and he misses me. Awesome. And his weak spot's right there. I'll walk right into it. Gonna finish him off. I'm going to try for it. So three stamina. Let's see if we can just get this guy in one go. So that gives me all of these, uh, minus four. So if I can roll 10 total, because he's got six life left, this guy's done. I don't think that's enough. I think that's eight. That's eight. Darn it, he's got two life left. All right, let's see what he's going to do. Oh, deadly grasp. Okay, this will definitely kill me if I don't dodge. But if I dodge, I can use my dodge roll and almost certainly kill him. So first he pushes me one. Doesn't matter this time, because he's going to attack no matter what. Uh, he pushes me again. And he's attacking for seven. I need two dodge results. All right, all my assassins training, it comes down to this. Yes! I will dodge into his space. I will use my backstab. Which means I get my strongest attack and no stamina cost. So, yes. And that takes out all his armor. Boom, boom. Two more damage than I needed. And let's see if we can oh, take it. So there we go. That was Dark Souls, the board game. And thanks to my patrons for suggesting I play this. Uh, sorry if the truncation bothered you, but this is a long game. See my review that just popped up in the link to hear more about that. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.